Gordon. My brother, how are you doing? How are you? I'm very happy to be in your wonderful portable studio. Thank you, yeah. Mobile studio. Exactly. Mobile studio. This it's is this is epic. I've I have never had experience before like this in my life. How many podcasts have you done? Oh, been on done 200. Damn. 200. Probably, yes, but nev never like this. Never in a million well, it, it, it depends what you mean, whether you mean my own shows or been on other, I mean, interviewed by others, 50, probably. Sure. But, uh, you know, at different conferences or opining about crypto and everything else, but okay. th this is, I love it. I yeah, love it. Yeah. You're Thank clever. You. I appreciate it. Can I interview you? you? Can we talk about of how course. you're... Of course. <laughs> but it's about you today. Today, but yeah. I, I, I'm reserving the right to get you on the show, and then we're going to... Talk about how you use this as a social hack to expand your life because sure. I, I can relate to that and you're yeah. a good role model. But please you feel free to use this setup if you ever want to do your own uh, podcast with with me. You, you can do it. and I'll just give you the footage. It's, it's, it's not a problem if if you want to do it like that. Okay, we'll you, see. You can uh, you can do that. I had a friend of mine in Australia who does a podcast, and he said to me, "Can I come and use this and the interview?" I was like, "Yeah, of course." And we didn't post it, but he obviously posted it. So. Yes. Um, this resonates with you, yes. right? Why? How? I feel like you've tried something like this before uh, to build your personal brand and meet people. Right. So my, I, I have to give you a little bit of history about how things evolve. So my, my day job, if you like that, is attorney doing blockchain and crypto. That's my passion. I actually went back into the practice of law because of blockchain and crypto. That's a whole story we can get into if you want. Okay. But, um, and I've been fortunate in that I've had a lot of stage time because I love public speaking. And so mm. I've emceed a lot of events and done a lot of presentations. But there's, there's nothing like being talking directly to your audience on social media. There's just no substitute mm -hmm. for it because you, it's, you have this sort of asynchronous communication. You can reach them whenever they're available. You don't have to be at the same place at the same time. You have this long tail of, of content you produce and so they can kind of catch up or get a sense of your thinking. You can leap past gatekeepers, mm -hmm. which is a big thing. You know, if you want to get this person to see you, mm -hmm. you don't need their secretary's permission. You don't need that person who's going to charge a commission or introductory fee. They'll just mm -hmm. find you when mm -hmm. they're looking for you. So it's it's just a great tool. It's kind of like a it's kind of like an asymmetric warfare technique. Mm -hmm. You know, social media is the guerrilla warfare of marketing, and I, I just love it. And I have a particular point of view about crypto and blockchain, and I, and I want to get it out there. So it's a great megaphone. Mm, of course. Yeah. So who are you? Let, let's start from the beginning. Cool. Would you say? Would you say you are? You're, so I was introduced to you mm -hmm. as a crypto attorney. Yes. Which is isn't many of them. No, not not many real ones. Right. And I and I've been doing this just to, to brag. I've been doing this for ten years. I'm, I'm not Johnny comes lately. Damn. I've been doing this a solid decade. Okay. So I, I didn't just figure on it. So since 2014. Yep, that's right. And is that when you invested in crypto? No, actually, I have a computer company in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. and we were displaying at Legal Tech in New York, and this couple came up to me next to me, and what year is this? 2013 or 14. Okay. Okay, and they were Ukrainian, and they were speaking in Russian because they're from Eastern Ukraine, and I've always liked the Russian language. So I'm not good at it, but I've always liked it. So we had a conversation. It turns out that they were the co-founders of the biggest uh, blockchain development house in Ukraine, Distributed Lab. Damn. And then, so they ended up staying with me in my condo in Los Angeles. And next thing I know, I have an invitation to go to Ukraine, which I accepted. And I hadn't left, not counting Mexico, I hadn't left the United States for 25 years because I was a loser. <laughs> and so I got my passport. I called them up. I said, I'm coming to Ukraine. And they were like, wait a second, this American who had this over to his house, you know, so they like the hospitality. Who hasn't left the country for all these years? His first trip is to Ukraine. Okay. And this is right after the Maidan revolution. And they're like, we better make this good for him. So they started a whole conference around me, the Blockchain Incredible Party in Odessa. And I had a great time in Ukraine. I got exposed to blockchain, crypto, and, and Bitcoin. I didn't fully understand it. I was too busy enjoying Odessa for everything it offered. But I kept on going back to Ukraine and I kept on getting exposed to crypto. Mm. And then finally I was like, you know what? I need to dig deep. So I spent two or three, you know, I was running a company, but I took two or three months. I taught myself how to program. I read all the documentation. I got really into it. And then the, the light bulb went off and I realized two things. Number one, if I went back into law, this would be a cool area of law to practice. Now that was okay. You know, that wasn't life changing, but the real life changing revelation was that these technologies, these ways of thinking, especially decentralization, could make law operate better. Mm. Okay, it's not just that you know I would have a good area of law to practice. It's that I could make law better. Like mm. I could change the world. And I've always 
felt like, you know, I want to have, a, you know, like Steve Jobs said, I want to make a dent in the universe. And I felt that with blockchain and with crypto, I could make a dent in the universe. And actually, I think I have made a dent in the universe because of it. And I'm making maybe a bigger dent now. Um, and it was so, it's so revolutionary. It just got me into it. I don't know. Mm. And then through a long series of life adventures and everything else, I ended up in Dubai. Sure. You know. So, <clears throat> what were you doing in 2013 when you met them? You had a computer science? I, I, I have, so I had practice law and I'd always liked technology. So I, I started a, what's called a remote desktop solution for okay. law firms. It was basically an environment where a law firm could operate, but not on their own computers. I was, a, it, yeah. I was an early cloud computing entrepreneur. Sure. Okay, and I had stopped practicing law and I was running that company. And that company still exists, mm -hmm. actually, and is successful. But I went to my employees in 2014, basically, or 2015-ish, and said, look guys, I want to go back into law and do this area of law. So you have a choice. I can either shut down the company or I can keep the company running and you guys can stay employed, but you need to make it so that I can do what I'm doing and not be dragged back into this. And they said, you're not giving us a choice, are you? I'm like, sure you have a choice. <laughs> you know? Shut it down or make it work? No, I mean, you know, you're not slaves. You're smart. You can get other jobs. But do you want to work, run with this or or go our separate ways. And they said, no, we, we, we want to support you in what you're doing. And they've been great. So okay. it's going to be still up and running in Los Angeles and doing well. Okay. But I've been able to do this all this time. Okay. So, okay. So, so you moved away from uh, that business mm -hmm. and you started getting into crypto and, uh, and uh, the, the, the legality side of things. What is it that you do now? What is it that you're working on now? So it's a continuation before. So, you know, what, what is crypto law? What is blockchain law? There's, it's, taking existing areas of law, but updating them for blockchain and, and crypto and bringing them together in new ways. So what are the traditional issues facing blockchain and crypto if you're doing a startup? Well, there's securities law, or if you look at a token, what is this thing? Is it a security? Is it a commodity? Is it a payment mechanism? Is it maybe a blend of all three, which is, can happen? That, that's one thing, because each one of those has its own regulatory framework. You have to figure out the tax issues, which of course are a big deal. I mean, if you're selling a token, do you need to pay sales tax? Mm -hmm. Do you need to pay that? Mm -hmm. You know, what's the story there? Or when someone owns it and they sell it, what's responsible? Uh, there's the intellectual property. If, you know, if you're doing something from open source, are you respecting the open source licenses? Are you hiring developers? If they develop something new, do you own that intellectual property? That's mm -hmm. a big issue. Where do, you, where do you set up your companies, plural? Mm -hmm. Because usually one company issuing the token, you might have a foundation, uh, that's doing the governance. You might have a DAO, mm -hmm. uh, the centralized autonomous organization, and, and there's banking. It, what, I, what I love about this area of law is it combines so many cutting edge areas, and effect, and you're not just applying the laws that existed. The, the law is changing because the technology has changed it. Mm -hmm. You can't apply it exactly like it was. You can you have to apply it but update it in your mind you have to update the regulators in the courts and help them understand that the things are different now mm. and you know i'm sure you know because you're here you know dubai is very progressive with vara virtual asset regulatory authority it's the first authority on the planet that's entirely dedicated towards the regulation of virtual assets mm -hmm. so it's not part of another regulator it's dubai is actually very innovative mm -hmm. that way but we have the difc we have adgm in abu dhabi we have the uae regulator esca so th this is a good cutting edge jurisdiction to mm. be in. So you and I are very smart for coming here. Congratulations, my friend. Yes, to both of us. Congratulations. Yes, yes. Um, look, I love it here. I love Dubai. Of course, yeah. I, I feel like the city was custom made for me. It probably was. It's, it's, it's still building. It's still be, being built, so it yeah. probably was. <laughs> Do you feel like that as well? I, I feel like I was custom made for Dubai. Mm. Ah, you see what I did there? I see. The good point. Yes. Good way to say it. Because I. It's just, uh, you know this meme on the internet about liminal spaces? Have you no. heard about this? Like a, a liminal space is a transition point, like an airport lounge. Sure. Or an empty shopping center, or the world at dawn or dusk when no one's there and it's just about to come, go to sleep or come alive. Sure. It's this sort of, li this, it, a liminal space is an in-between place. Uh -huh. Well, Dubai, of course there's people who've lived here for thousands of years, but sure. Dubai, somewhat intentionally, kind of like Las Vegas, has a feeling of being in-between. It's sort of like a beautiful airport lounge. Yes. You know, you're going to be here for a while. You're going to have a great time. You know, you're like an American Express Centurion lounge. Yes. Okay, it's beautiful. They're <laughs> going to take care of you. But one way or another, your ticket's going to come up and you're going to leave. Sure. One day. Sure. Okay, with yeah. very few exceptions. Yes, yes. Right, yes. You know, you're, you're, when you're 80, 70, maybe, you, you know. Don't, who, how, how many people retire here? How many people are buried here? 
mm. at some point you tend to leave and they've done yeah. it by design they don't want yes you know they want you to come in here have a, yes. it's, a, it's a friendly environment they're not yeah. hostile they, they're actively enticing you but they're enticing yeah. you here while you're spending money while you're being productive yes. while you're being everything else yeah which is actually fine with me because i you know even though i'm from los angeles i feel sort of like a citizen of the world yeah and dubai is a great airport lounge yeah you know i have access to everywhere else and while i'm here i'm comfortable yeah and also in airport lounge who do you mingle with entrepreneurs business yes. people right yep. it's all entrepreneurs and business people here when i you know you had an event on uh two nights ago yes great event thank you for coming thank you i, for I, I know i know you're busy <laughs> no uh, seriously I, I know you're busy and i know you're popular and to have someone like you show up is a real real compliment so i appreciate it listen i appreciate you me getting an invite from you uh it's uh, was a pleasure and i had to come uh and uh, i was actually flying to london but when you invited me i was like i'm canceling everything i actually had a nice. friend here as well that mm. i didn't go to london and he's like hey do you want to cancel the iftar event and come hang out with us before we leave i'm like no <laughs> listen this, you don't know the person that invited me to this i'm going to this that's flatter Thank um you. but what a successful event so many people jesus mm. christ it was the place was full um, well, can I jump in and comment yeah. on that? So it's, as you've been watching, it's not a one-off. I'm actively iterating and there's a strategy behind it. And this is the second, if our, dare I say, this iftar season. The one we did before was at Raffles on the Palm, which was very nice, but it was twice the size. And it had a different dynamic. And my, you know, I've never, sitting on my laurels, I'm always looking at what could be better. And this time was intentionally smaller. It may feel like it was bigger, but it was half the size wow. and very, very selective sure. and much more curated and much more structured than the last one. Because I, I realized that the thing that makes the events good is not just people coming in and chowing down, mm. but, but the, you know, I immediately want to have a sense of community. Mm. And when you get too big of a group or depending on the architecture of the building, or how, Raffles is great and they did a good job for us. But yeah. the thing about Siddhartha at Grovesnar is we, we know the management. I could work with them in advance. We had a, a schedule. We had a yeah. way of getting the people in there. I, I don't know, hopefully you felt the vibe, but it's yeah. like a community, intellectual, spiritual vibe. Yeah, yeah. Which you don't get too often in Dubai. No. No. No, it's, it's <laughs> for sure there was a vibe there. And uh, you were a great host too, by the way. Thank you. Great host. You're... Uh, I keep on hitting the, the microphone. I know, you keep hitting <laughs> the microphone. <laughs> the editor's going to love that. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I'm breaking the fourth wall. Everyone who's watching, it's all my fault. It has nothing to do with the editor. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> um, but no, you, you were great. You, were, uh, you, you kept the party going and, um, and you were very entertaining, to be honest. Very entertaining on the microphone. You kept, you know, I realized you kept the microphone at a great distance away from your face when you gave the microphone to somebody else and yeah, they were just like, <laughs> I just couldn't hear anything. Um, but practice, no, my friend. Practice, yeah, yeah, But you're a natural. Uh, I actually, and, let me just say something to your audience. Yeah. I'm not a natural. I grew up very shy and with a speech impediment. <clears throat> And I've had some very anxiety producing uh, events as a kid mm. relating to public speaking. And what you're seeing is practice. Sure. So for people watching, if you're not a natural, don't give up. Keep practicing. Yeah. It, it, it does get better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Sure. It's also when you work on something, you're going to be a lot better than somebody that relies on just talent. Yes. Right? 100%. So you, it's, it's sometimes better to start from behind. Yeah. Because yeah, you, it makes you much more conscious about what you're doing. Correct. It makes you much more self-aware. And sure, there's it's not quite as emotionally fun as if you're naturally mm. good at something. But it's okay. If you end up ahead, it's like it's a good feeling. Yeah. But also, I feel like anybody that is exceptional in their craft, it doesn't come natural to them because they've had to work to make that skill. Yeah. While if it, while if the skill comes natural to you, you don't actually work on it. No. You kind of go, oh, I've got it naturally. I'm gonna say something very off, which is, it's like being a beautiful woman. If you're a beautiful woman, you don't necessarily have to work as hard. Sure. It's just the way it is, very right? Very sure. So, you know, no one would call me a beautiful woman. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I have to work for it. But you know what? Men are supposed to be beautiful. No, we're, we're supposed to be capable. We're supposed to be men. Yes. Right? Okay, so I had a question. Um, with your, I had a few questions actually, but I just wanna go back quickly about, you mentioned LA. Yeah. Do you not feel like Dubai is LA before LA was LA? I feel like Dubai is like on mm. the up to be. So L is. LA, it's funny, I was, I'm learning German and I was just watching a video series in German about Los Angeles and California. And it's funny because I'm from there yet I'm getting a foreigner perspective, A, because I haven't been there for a while mm -hmm. and because I'm watching a, a German network's perspective on California, which is kind of like a weird <laughs> shift of perspective. It's like yeah. a real fusion state. The um, look, Los Angeles was 
in California was great. Was mm -hmm. it was the Golden State, and especially Northern California had its charm, and you know you have every environment possible. It it was great. I to be real honest, the answer is, and I don't want to be a downer, but unfortunately, I think California and the U.S. have really blown it. They've blown it with their taxes. They've blown it with the population. They've blown it with the crime. They've blown it with a lot of with the traffic. It's just it's you know there, of course there's some bright spots. Of course you're going to visit, uh, but it it had its moment and. Now, I think, to your point, I think the Middle East is having its, its moment. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, as, as someone who has a German citizenship also, I'm not happy to see what's happening with the U.S. I'm not happy, happy to see what's happening with Europe. And it's funny, the, 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 and I'm not going to live with, with China. I'm, it's not, it, China is great, but it's not where I'm, my brain is. But to, to, I think Dubai and the Middle East has taken the best of the U.S. and the best of Europe, and not just there, brought it here re-innovated it mm. like made it their own it's it's mm. uh, you know I'm, I'm not in frankfurt i'm not in los angeles <laughs> i'm not in miami you know it, it is different yeah okay there's no mistaking i am somewhere different but they've brought enough of those elements over and adapted them for the environment that someone like me doesn't feel out of sorts mm. i feel like i said you know like i was made for dubai it's like it has enough reminiscence it has the sushi Mm -hmm. Okay, it has the beach, mm -hmm. you know, it, it has the efficiencies I needed that mm -hmm. I, I can operate here. So I don't know if I'm answering your question. So no, much, you are. But a buddy of mine, he's from LA and he lives here. He trains the uh, DeMarc family. Uh, he was number two oh, nice. head trainer for Nike, all that. He was an ex uh, NFL player, well, uh, college NFL That's player. That's a big deal. Yeah, he's, he's, he's very, he's very uh, high in the, in, the, in the fitness game in LA. And he said LA is almost running off their... Yes. Uh, uh, what is it? Their their name, their uh, what's their well, reputation? They're, 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 the sure. reputation of what LA used to be. They're still riding off what the name used to be, but it's not that. It's not that anymore. Germany also, mm. uh, and, I, and, I, and I hate to say that I studied in Germany as a kid, and I, it's you know everyone thinks it's this like paradigm of efficiency and order and safety and everything else. It's not, and mm. everyone thinks LA is like this golden place with you know the Beach Boys. I'm dating myself. You know, and, and sushi and surf and everything else. And sh sure, it's there, but there's so much you have to get through to get to that. Yeah. It's like, no, Dubai's, Dubai does live up to its reputation. Yeah. You know, this place is not running off its prior reputation. It's making its new reputation. Yeah. It's building up. So y your friend's right. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's real. It's uh, it's really real here. Like, there's, there's people that actually have it. Um, when you... Yeah. You got to be careful here. There's a lot of people that aren't real too. Yeah. The, right? uh, the, actually, the, the, the point behind the events I'm doing is, and take it as a compliment, they're, they're highly curated. Sure. Okay. I'm not selling tickets. No yeah. one can get in there if they're not invited. Yeah. And a lot of people want to get in there and they're, they're not getting in there. It, yeah. Also because the space is limited. But the goal is to, the, the, the problem with the airport lounge is you never really know if the person there is who they say they are. If they use cash or points. Yeah, you know, or why? You know, yeah, or, yeah. you know, their business class or first class, you know, is it their one-time splurge or yeah. is it the normal thing? Daily, yeah. You know, yeah, and sure. also, you know, right outside that airport lounge is the private jet, you know, FBO. Yes. So you, you gotta be careful. You gotta be careful here because there's a lot of people here that aren't serious, that come here to spend their money or to, to say that they're doing something but not really do it. They're here, uh, because there's lots of friendly people here, you know, read read between the lines. But there's there is serious people here. People have you know met business partners here, and uh, the, the rep of Dubai is that this is the place you come to spend your money, not the place you come to make your money. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's actually true. Mm. But you need to be very careful with who you're talking to, mm -hmm. and vet them over a certain period of time, and check them out with other people who know them. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it. The problem is it's hard to do that efficiently here and things can move fast. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we're on inshallah time, sometimes we're on is it, it needs to get done yesterday to time and you have to be able to adapt. And so part of the goal behind these events, it's not really an event, it's a community, is to build a high trust bubble mm -hmm. in a non-trust environment. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, how, how can you... Wow, yeah, that's well It's that's intentional. Well that's very well said. A yeah. high trust bubble in a... Non-trust environment. environment. Now, I'm careful with how I said that. <clears throat> it's not a no-trust environment. It's not a dishonest environment. It's a non-trust environment. Like a Bitcoin, it's actually, I got it from crypto. It's not that you have to trust the blockchain, okay? The blockchain is, is just reporting what happened, sure. right? It removes the need for trust, right, in, in some ways. And here, you, you can't really, tr outside of your a, a bubble, 
uh, in Dubai, you can't really know whether to trust or not trust because you don't have the information to, to let you know. Okay, you haven't known this person a long time. You, know, you can't look up all their business records. You can't see what they did in their home country. You can't really know unless you, know, unless you work with them for a while. But what if you, and it takes time to build that relationship, but what if you build a bubble of trust, mm -hmm. mutual trust within that environment? Mm -hmm. You can get a lot done. Mm -hmm. But as someone organizing that bubble, maybe there's a better word, I need to be act like a, I have to be like a hawk mm. because I can't let in a non-trustworthy element into the trust bubble because then it breaks the whole premise. Very true. So I'm very selective about who I'm letting yeah. into that bubble and very, you know, hire slowly, fire quickly. Yeah. You know, and it, it's not personal. It's like uh, you know, yeah. I want to have a good life. I know, I know things happen. I'm not perfect myself, but you know, it's like I watch. Yeah. I'm actively watching and actively curating, but. Yeah. But that being said, it's already been successful. I mean, we were talking before we started recording. You know, you met someone there that you didn't, didn't normally talk yeah. to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it, it's like w when you're in that room and everyone's smart and everyone's intellectual and everyone's nice and everyone's yeah. calm. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, look, it was um, it was a good event. It was a great event, actually. And and you're right. It, it's uh, you know, I've got a friend who is the CEO of the legal department of uh, Emirates MBD Bank. That's right. Right. He's, he's Got a law. F uh, n now he's that, that is a good friend. That's a great friend. You should keep that friend. Great friend. <laughs> uh, he, he's actually flying me to Mexico to read his book to, uh, with him to give him tips because uh, he's writing a book. Um, and me nice. and him, me and him love reading books. And we we connected at a at a little uh, brunch thing we had, and uh, everyone else like went uh, disappeared. Me and him ended up talking for like three hours. That's the best because um, yeah. we read the same books. And, and he's like, I need you to read my book and let me know what you think. Uh, he's, he's, he's ventured off now and he's got his own legal firm. Uh, mm -hmm. He's got, I think, like 23 lawyers that work for him in the Super. city or something like that. Anyways, um, he said to me when he was the Emirates MBD uh, CEO of the legal department, he said 90% of people in Dubai mm -hmm. make less than 17,000 dirhams a month. He goes, I'm my paralegal. I pay him 14,000 dirhams a month. And he's wearing a the Brentling watch, mm. a Gucci shirt. He goes, so what you're going to back to what you were saying before, there's a lot of people that can fake it here. It's very easy to look rich, by the way. It's very easy to look rich. So there's a lot of people that yeah. can fake it here. So, so creating that environment of vetting the people and making sure that they are legit and they are, and then putting them together, it's almost like a business networking uh, event, right? It, it certainly is a business networking event, but it's, there's a lot of cheesy business networking groups out there. Yeah. So, and it's, and it's got to be, it's got, to work, it's got to be more. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the more is, dare I say, the spiritual aspect of it. Yeah. Or you can call it community aspect of it or, or the vibe. I mean, you know, yeah. someone told me and my wife, you know, they were surprised at how intellectual and spiritual the event was. Yeah. You know, A, it's Iftar, and I, I want to be respectful of the, of the culture and the religion. But B, it's, you know, when you, money's great. I'm all about, I'm not all about, but I, I highly endorse capitalism, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm here for a reason, but uh, there's gotta be something more. Mm -hmm. And the, the more is the culture, the spirit, the intellect, you, you gotta put that spark in there. You gotta put the divine spark into it. Yeah. And if it's missing, you can feel it's missing. Yeah. And if it's there, you can feel it's there. And when it's there, you know, people will forgive the fact that the valley is, you know, the valley was great there, but it, yeah. the, people will not care about the valley so much so long as when they get in, it's there. Yeah. And something can look perfect, but if the divine spark is not inside of it, it yeah. just is soulless. Correct. So the, I'm just very careful about that. And then some people will resonate with this and some people won't. And if they won't, that doesn't make them bad. Yeah. They're just maybe not good for this group. Correct. You know, so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're more tailored for a different group, right? There are, there are different stages of life. Everyone, everyone, everyone's valid. I'm not right? judging anyone. Yeah. I, I'm not here to like do any of that stuff. No. I'm not perfect, you know, it's just, yeah. but I, I, I'm not terrible either. And yeah. I know what works and I put in the effort. Yeah. And I, I've been around the block a few times. Yeah. So I, I get a sense of what can work and yeah, so, some people, people some, some good people such as yourself vibe with it. Yeah, which is nice, of course. And also, like, take that opportunity by the horns and do something with it. But my, my friend, who's a lawyer in India, by the way, by the way, my, just real fast. Yes, action wins. Yeah, action wins. Yeah. So to your point, yes, take yeah. the opportunity, and grab it. You, yeah. you got to run with it. Yeah, of course. By the way, I need to introduce you to my lawyer friend. Please do. Now, Please. now that I spoke to you about that, I'm like, man, why have I not introduced you to him? You need to meet him because everything happens when it should. Yeah, exactly. Very true. You're real spiritual, aren't you? Yes. Hi, sir. 
How are you? If you like this video, consider subscribing. We do weekly podcasts with experts in every industry to help you find direction and guide you on your way. Now let's get back into it. Are you good? What would you like? Coffee? Uh, cup of latte. Cup of latte, the size. It's large, uh, and I'll get large. a cup, cappuccino. <laughs> uh, shack? No, sir. Uh, tea? No, no. Tea? No, Coffee? Sir. Thanks. Shaq. Shaq always Shaq. Shaq gets that juice. Shaq, don't don't let me down, Shaq. Come on, Shaq. I can't drink unless you're drinking. Yeah. Juice? Uh, no, it's cold coffee, sir. Okay. Uh, one uh, with milk? Yes. Uh, cold coffee, cold latte? Yeah, Large? Can, can I get the uh, milk warm, not too hot, because I want to drink it now. Thank you. I always come here. During the show. And, and this is epic. it's the same place. Yeah. So they always, so whenever I'm here, there's a lady that always works here. So they always put their head in to be like, who's the guest you have on today? So. Yeah. Super. Yeah. Hello. By the way, we have big guests today. Yeah. Hi, hi, how are you? You know, you know Leonardo DiCaprio? Uh, you know That's Leonardo what? DiCaprio. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> and he's my, twi- and he's my 25 year old girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to take a photo with you. You want to take a photo of it? Cheers. Costa, you need to sponsor us. Costa, hello. <laughs> Costa Coffee, the best coffee in Dubai. <laughs> Soon to be sponsor of On Our Way podcast. That's right. You know, if you know what's good for you. <laughs> we sh- you know what we should do? We should do like the racketeering New York style. Oh, yeah. We should be like, listen, you need security, okay? <laughs> exactly. Got some construction problems? <laughs> Want this handled? Yeah. Oh, you didn't know you were under construction? <laughs> now you know. <laughs> now you know. <laughs> Buddy. Okay, so let's talk about Germany. Mm. Because you're, you're, you talked about Frankfurt before. Okay, how deep do you want me to get? Let's, as deep as you like. Okay, so no, here, here's the background. Okay, I am just, you know, you, anyone who knows history knows Einstein is a German Jewish last name. Okay, yes. I cannot hide. Uh, some people try to pass. The, so, you're, so you're Gordon Einstein. Gordon Einstein. Wow. Okay, and I am, uh, Albert Einstein's grandfather is my direct ancestor. Okay. No. Yeah, really. 100%. No wonder you're smart. I'm okay. I ain't so smart. Wow. So, well, I'm I'm, your, re- I'm reasonable. Your brain does work very fast. It does that, right? for a variety of reasons. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah. So Albert Einstein's grandfather. Not I'm not linear from Albert Einstein, but his grandfather is my direct ancestor. Damn. Yes. So my from his mom's side or his dad's side. Uh, dad's side. Dad's side. So yeah. his granddad from his dad is is your line. Yes. Damn. Yeah. Patrilineal. Did you see the Oppenheim? Yes. Uh, yeah. You yeah, like it? Of course I like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, my, my, yeah, my, my wife fell asleep during it, but I, and I don't like, blame her. So I, offended. <laughs> huh? Well, no, 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 it's, it's okay. <laughs> this is a family history lesson we're watching right now. <laughs> well, k- kind of. Well, Oppenheimer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A little it, was, bit. it was a long movie in her defense. I, like, you know, it, it was, I think maybe it was a guy's movie. Yeah, yeah. But who, who, who knows? Yeah. I, you know, she made me watch Barbie. Did she? <laughs> yeah. It was, it was good for the first half. You know, <laughs> okay. The, okay, so the, the, here's the story. So my grandfather so my, my my family had lived in Baden-Württemberg Germany for hundreds of years uh-huh. the Einsteins and I have a whole family tree of it and my grandfather Gustav Einstein uh, was a medical doctor in Germany and actually fought with the Germans in World War one so you know I I have his Iron Cross I have his, his I have his um, German military pe- medals which is wow. interesting very interesting. interesting. And whenever I'm whenever I'm feeling wimpy, I just look at that Iron Cross. I'm like, Are you a man? <laughs> are, are you a man, Mr. Gordon Einstein? You know, yeah, here he yeah, was, and yeah. so he with, actually, with your lattes, with my lattes, and you know everything else, <laughs> and my pink shirt. So you know, it's, yeah. it's okay. We cross all boundaries here. Yeah, yeah. So he then had a successful medical practice, but and was doing well and had a house and everything else. And then the Nazis took power. And at first, the Jews who had served in the military were not treated to the same extent as the other ones, but eventually things got pretty bad, and some relatives in New York wired them, and they said, guys, you don't know how bad it's getting. You're in the bubble right now. Maybe, you know, it's kind of like in Los Angeles. You're, you're, you're in the bubble where, you know, you're, the news is controlled. You don't understand what you're in. Okay, don't be like the frog that's in the boiling water and never gets out. You need to get out now. And so they listened, they sold everything, and the way it worked is you could only take like 100 Reichsmarks out of the country. They went out to Hamburg, they, I, I found all the records. They took a steamer to New York, emigrated to Ellis Island, I have the signatures, everything else. No. And then um, they got away and survived, a lot of relatives didn't. And, and then my father served in the US Air Force, became a lieutenant colonel, and was working on spy satellites and did a lot of cool, interesting stuff. And unfortunately, he passed away when I was pretty young, at, at 12 years old. And so I never got the whole story. And of course, I was too young to even appreciate it. 
But uh, here's how life turned very ironic. You know, I had always played with the idea of restoring German citizenship because you can do that if you're Jewish and you left during a certain period of time. It's presumed you left because of the Nazis. And at the time I was married, I'll leave her unnamed, and the, the, the wife at that time wanted us to move to Switzerland. So she wanted me to go get an EU, go get my EU passport, basically. All right, I applied for it, and this is during COVID and everything else, and they told me it's gonna be two years. All right, she got pissed off, that marriage didn't work out. We got separated, and then, it's funny, I emailed the, um, the de responsible department in Berlin, and said, hey guys, sorry I don't speak perfect German yet, I'm working on it, and I know you're busy. I just wanna check in, make sure you got my application, and just see how it's going. And they, they wrote back in German and said, look, Mr. Einstein, don't worry about it. Yes, we're behind, you know, but, and sorry for responding in German, you know, we have to do that. I'm like, and I wrote back and I'm like, look, no, no, no problem, just, just keep me posted. Sure. Okay, two weeks later, I got a notification that my application got approved. I am 99% certain that because I had a nice, civil, pleasant dialogue by email with just the front level staff at that office, that they said, hey, can you just go check this file? And my, my file was completely documented. Like I had the, I looked at the whole family tree, got the records, got everything. I probably had the most documented application file ever. So then I'm like, oh. so, you know, it, it was the ironies of ironies that I applied for this uh, pa passport because of my prior relationship. Uh, there was some friction because it was gonna be delayed. You know, we separate and then it, here it comes. Damn. So now I got my German passport and it, it's great. So I have the US one and the German one and okay. I'm, if, I'm like, what, what kind of German doesn't speak German? Yeah. So every morning I get up very early, 5.30 or 6 o'clock, and I study German for an hour and a half. Damn. So I got my Anki flashcard program, okay. I got my videos on YouTube, I got my everything. And so I passed my A1 Goethe certificate. I'm going yeah. for my A2 or, or B1. And I, I, I kind of need to knock them down. German this year, then Russian, then Arabic. Because you know what, what, what kind of person lives in an Arab country and doesn't speak Arabic? Plus, yeah. I think everyone should get along, and yeah, I try yeah. to get, I try to bridge gaps, and you know, and obviously yeah. this is a place with a lot of politics and a lot of religion. So I think it's good to, you know, my wife is Ukrainian, and half my friends are yeah. Ukrainian, half are Russians. It's a whole complicated boondoggle here. So <laughs> I, I love it. I love it though. I, I I I love it, but I'm also sensitive to people's feelings. Yes. And so it's if you. I'm very, you know, if you stick with your own kind all the time, you don't learn mm. anything. You need to exactly. reach across. You need to talk to people who yeah. maybe don't even like you at first. Yeah. And then get them to calm down and then have a conversation. And then you can usually figure something out. Yeah. And so I'm a big believer in that. And it, it gets a lot easier when you can speak someone's language. Sure. Um, of and course. So, so, and it also shows that you're trying to make it, you know, easier for them, right? Like, like the initiative. Yeah, yeah. You know? But, you know, it's like speaking a little bit of Urdu here is very helpful because yeah. there's so many Pakistanis. Yeah. You know, if you say, Ab kese hai, you know, you're immediately... What does yeah. that mean? How are you? How are you? Yeah. Okay. You know, and so the, and there's shukriya. So in Arabic, shukran is thank you. Yes. Yeah, I'm sure you know. Yeah. You know, and... and, and I don't the, speak Arabic, though. Okay, I've just read you. <laughs> you're more likely to know than I would. Yeah, yeah, How, yeah. How's that? <laughs> um, and then, what's your background? Iranian. Iranian. Okay, so fine. Khubeh. Khubeh. Yeah. Eshkaman. <laughs> Eshkaman. Da -da. He definitely had you said that a wrong. Persian girlfriend. Because it's all love words right now, okay? If he had Persian boys, he'd be giving me swear words, but he's not. It's all... Khare. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Shout out to my Persian friends. Yes, I, exactly. And yeah. not, neither of us is from Rasht. Don't worry about <laughs> from it. From Rasht. Bro, are you impressed? <laughs> that, my friends, is what happens when you grow up in Beverly Hills, California, otherwise known as Little Tehran. <laughs> That's Cheers. right. Tehran Jules. That's what they call it. Tehran Jules. Oh, okay. No, lots of Persian friends. Very impressive. Very oh, impressive. Uh, I mean, the, the, the biggest population outside of mm -hmm. uh, Iran is, is uh, LA. Yep. I know. Biggest. Actually, I know. And there's, by the way, there's more Armenians in Glendale than there are in Armenia. No. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. You, you get that in the United States. Is it because of the genocide? Too soon? <laughs> what? <laughs> no comment, my Azerbaijani brothers. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, but actually, yeah. if I can, that's what I like about Dubai. Because Dubai, for like, it's it's not this pristine democracy. It is an authoritarian monarchy. Sure. But you know, they and we all are here on visas. Okay, we're yeah. not here by right. We're here with permission. Mm -hmm. And the social contract that is, you know, not even implicit. It's written. Mm -hmm. Is you have to be polite to other people. You can't raise your voice. You can't insult. You can't, you know, slam on social media. You can't copy paste. I love so, that. It, it, I, I love it because it, it forces you to either be silent, avoid, 
or to engage in a reasonable manner. Mm -hmm. Okay, and because there's so much business happening here and so much opportunity here, you're kind of foolish if you don't engage. Mm -hmm. And so I, you know, there's a lot of people out in the rest of the world that are fighting, and I, I'm, not, I'm not uninvolved. I mean, I am who I am, I'm not in denial. But, you know, and I am, I have a very strong uh, connection also to Ukraine because my history there. I'm not, I'm not sticking my head in the sand, but I refuse to not communicate with people. I refuse mm -hmm. to be in a bubble. And I think that's part of the idea behind the iftar. I mean, you know, here I am, a, a Jewish guy, you yeah. know, working with other people to boost an iftar. It, it, it's because I believe in the philosophy of the yeah. religion and the celebration and the crossing of boundaries and getting people involved. And so you have a diverse group of yeah. people. It's, it's Everyone's fun, accepted man. here. Everyone's accepted here. Yes. Right, I was at Nas, you know Nas Daily? Of course. He's a Jewish guy. Uh, I was at his uh, iftar event and there was Muslims, Buddhists, uh, everything. Is he Jewish? Are you sure? Jewish? I, I, I thought he was an Arab who speaks very good English and is trying to cross. No. Are, you, are you sure? Yeah, fully Jewish. Fully, fully, fully he Jewish. He me. Okay, well fine, here's the Nas. Because we, we, we spoke about it. Uh, and, and I said to him, has anything changed for you? He goes, no, everyone's so, so uh, welcoming and, and, and uh, everything. And I've known Nas for one year now. Okay. So, and first thing, first conversation we had as well was, uh, was from his Jewish background. Oh, um, can, can I share a thought? Of course. Okay, so I'm, look, I, I'm not sure everyone's welcoming. I'm not sure everyone likes you. I, th I think there's an element of enforced politeness with some people, but I think hmm. that that's okay. That's normal human behavior. And I don't, I don't expect miracles. But what I do think is that, you know, you can melt ice with warmth. Okay. Mm. And if you're, if someone is pre, you know, I mean, if you want to get all heavy about it, if, I like to get super heavy about it just because I don't want to get censored. But look, something is actively happening in the Middle East right now. Okay. Mm. I don't expect people to not have a reaction or be sensitive, especially when their family's involved. I mean, mm. it'd be ignorant or stupid. You know, they are going to feel what they feel and they are maybe even right to feel it. Okay, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to treat everyone with respect. I'm going to be warm with them. And I think on an individual one-on-one -on -one basis, you can establish some good relationship. And then even if they still have the general point of view, which may be, may be valid, they'll understand that you're not here to cause them a problem. Sure. And then things can happen. Sure. So that's sure. my little speech. Of course. I mean, thank you. Thank you for your speech. Um, <laughs> Casa, I, I hope that wasn't too controversial and you can still sponsor the show. Oh, unlike shit. some other coffee company. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 e edgy, edgy. <laughs> edgy. Yeah. Uh, we're getting canceled. Coffee beans, okay. We're getting canceled. Yeah. Um, you know, Elon Musk said, like, uh, that, that there's people that have, that there's young individuals that have no problem with each other going to war, killing each other over two people that have a problem with each other, the two politicians, right? <sighs> Did you see that tweet? Something like that. I don't totally agree. Okay. <laughs> to be honest. I mean, like, I, I, I've not, I don't have my, I don't think you do either. I don't have my head in the clouds. Sure. Okay, I am very aware of history and game, game theory and sometimes it is personal and sometimes it is lower ground and, and it's not just old men deciding that young men should die. I think there's more going on than that. And we can't just, it's not just a matter of us all. There are scarce resources in this world. There are distinct differences. There are reasons to fight. I think if it's easy to have peace, everyone would have peace. The, the challenge is it's not easy to have peace. That's why you gotta be serious and thoughtful when you're interacting with people and not pretend that everything's okay, but work to make things as good as they can be. I think that, that you know, if you, if you go in there a little bit too innocent, you're gonna sound like you're saying platitudes and, and not accomplish something. If you go in there and you really understand what's happening, I can understand that the person and still need to fight with them. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know, that, that can happen. And, you know, if you're starving and there's one apple and there's, you know, and anything less than one apple, you'll die and your kids will die. Of course. You know, if, come on, you know, then, you know, all that Taoism goes out the window. Yeah. You know, everyone's a cannibal on an on island. Yeah. Okay, but you're, I think our job is, you know, while we're in this position where we have resources and thought, we can put the structures in the world that prevent things from getting that desperate and let people focus on being better. Sure. And I think that's, you know, it's, it's good to be a, a hard man that sees truth, that fights for peace. Mm -hmm. How's that? Mm -hmm. if you, you feel that hardness. I do. Mm. I know you do. I see that look in your eye. The hot, I'm trying to process it right now. You want to be a hard man who's realistic and capable of violence, who fights for peace. It's like what Jordan Peterson said. He said, you know, that is like be what Jordan become, become a lion and then tame it. Yeah. Look, you know, the, he, he got that from Aristotle. Aristotle, okay. when he was talking about the Republic and the city, said that the guardians of the city 
must be like friendly puppy dogs with the citizens and like fierce wolves with the foreigners. Okay, Damn. now and that, that's right. Now, you know, the, the, the foreigner concept in ancient Greek philosophy was like, if you're not one of the city, you're not one of us. You know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fierce dog for humanity. Okay, which, which is, you know, I'm a, I'm a human patriot. Sure. I have, actually have a video on that. Okay, I'm a patriot for humanity, you know, by the grace of God. And the, um, I think you are, if you're just in peace mode without seeing reality, you're you can accomplish some good, but you can, you can actually be far more effective if you're hard and objective and fight for peace. Okay. So, which is actually kind of related to crypto and blockchain. It actually all folds around. Well, I mean, there's a lot of these things, even with philosophy and everything, that blockchain actually fixes. Yes, it, it, it's a it's a very interesting tool that affects the person who uses it. So, excuse me, what, what do I mean by that? I just had this conversation with uh, Coin W, the the president. I can introduce you to her. She's a very smart lady. I met her. She was at the Sonia, event. of yeah. course. Well, that's yeah. easy. That event, by the way, if you weren't at that event, you lost out. Yeah. So Sonia's yeah. amazing. So yeah. she's Chinese, but she grew up in Australia. We had a full conversation. I, you don't even need me anymore. I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll sit back. Hey, because but, of you. Because of you. Uh, well, that's my purpose. <laughs> now, what, what, the conversation I had with her, and I'm going to do another interview with her, is, you know, she her initial exposure to blockchain and crypto was, you know, she got excited by the fact it was making so much money, which is normal. That's what a lot of people got into it for. But what happens is, then you want to understand why it's going up and down. And then you want to understand, you know, well, fine, how's the blockchain work? You know, and then why do we need this? And without knowing it, you get pulled into this intellectual upward spiral mm. of understanding what's money, what's government, what's the monetary system, what's inflation, what's tax, what's war. And it, it it's a strange thing where the using of this tool starts to affect your brain. Mm. And it's it's a great, t- I love it for that. I, I love it for that because it's like using a computer kind of leads you to understand electronics and networks and everything else. Mm. Even if you're not like, um, you know, if you're not when we're blockchain is much stronger because mm-hmm. in order to, to have competitive advantage there you really do need to understand it and then you have to get to the why mm-hmm. so I I think that blockchain is a tool for peace and decentralization mm. is a tool for peace it, it, but it's a tool for peace for people who don't trust each other mm-hmm. think how glorious that is yeah like if you and I are transacting Bitcoin I don't need to trust you I don't yeah. need to know you yeah and yeah we can do it yeah yeah going back to crypto yes sir Obviously, you're in the legal and department. Costa Coffee. And Costa Coffee, soon to be our sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> See what I'm doing there? I like that. I like okay, that. Okay. Uh, going back to crypto, obviously, like you're you're in the legal sector of crypto, and I mean, it's a new industry that's constantly being built right now. Like you mm. said before, is 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 that an asset? Is that a commodity? Whatever, whatever. I would imagine it just to be a fucking head fuck of you trying to figure out what the fuck is going on. I mean, already the, the normal system, I mean, everything's already pre-written in, in the traditional system in the legal department. You can uh, follow up this, follow up this uh, law, uh, this says this, whatever, whatever, right? But right now with crypto, it's kind of being built with the law system around Isn't it. Isn't it amazing? Because the SEC doesn't even know. The SEC is debating right now, is it a commodity, is it a security, is it this, is it that, right? So how do you fucking, how do you get around that? Because I, I'd imagine it'd be a head fuck. It is... I'm not gonna use that language just because <laughs> just because I'm I'll put it differently. It's a head. It messes with your head. Yeah. Um, but the great thing is it messes at your head at a nice hourly billable rate. I'm from Australia, by the way. We, that's how we. That's talk. it. I'm not like yeah. being. I'm just saying my choice. <laughs> okay. So yeah. um, look, the, um, it's brilliant and beautiful, actually, because it, it's another thing where you when you try to understand what it is and mm. try to apply legal concepts to it, you start thinking how the law could be better. Mm. Okay, when you start applying, trying to apply a securities law to this stuff, you realize that this law from the 1930s, 1930, you know, is the Securities Act of 1933 and the Securities Exchange Act of, of 1934, even as amended, even as updated, can't wrap their heads around this. And if you try to shoehorn crypto into these laws, you're going to lose the ability to innovate mm. to jurisdictions that don't try to do that. Mm-hmm. So it's it is. It does call for new law. Now, the great thing about law is it is updatable. It can be updated. That's part of what makes law amazing. You know, it, it's not. We're not. At least in the commercial law, we're not in a legal system where it was delivered. You know, five thousand years ago, and you can't change it. Okay, the law. law under, you know, most legal systems, including here, understand that technology adapts and you need new rules. And what worked twenty years ago, or even five years ago, don't work now. It's like, you know, there, there weren't commercial drones. 10 years ago at mm. least you know now you need new law yeah. so 
Now, what's, what's to, to your point, what's amazing is it's not just that stuff is new, it's that it changes. Like Ethereum was proof of work, now mm -hmm. it's proof of stake. Maybe it wasn't security, maybe now it is because mm -hmm. it's proof of stake and you can actually make money off it, like a, like a dividend. And that's what the SEC is mm -hmm. kind of saying. You know, and so we're dealing with this sort of, these sort of quantum assets yeah. or these Heisenberg assets that, that change their form depending on who's looking at them and when. Mm. And I think my, my personal feeling is that the, the question should eventually become irrelevant because these things should be blockchain and machine defined and then blockchain machine and AI interpreted. Mm. Okay. Because if you're looking at a really complex molecule, you can't say it's just one thing. It's not just car it's not just a proton, it's not just an electron, it's not just a neutron. And plus, when you put them in new configurations, they are fundamentally different. They provide different qualities. So I, I think I think our laws can become computational. Mm -hmm. But on the on the way to that, there's opportunities for guys like me to A, apply the existing law in a way that's smart, but B, talk to the regulators and get them to update their perspective. You know, VARA, to their credit, here, you know, says, look, if it's a virtual asset, we don't care whether it's a security or commodity or payment mechanism. We're evaluating the project and the token, you know, from scratch. And they have one unified regulatory system. Mm. By the way, you know, if, if you think about it, it's strange. The, the UAE has the Emirates Securities and Commodities Authority, securities and commodities. Mm -hmm. okay? The United States has the Securities Exchange Commission, then across the river, they have the CFTC, Commodities and Futures Trading Commission. Why do we have two separate why do we have two separate um, government departments? Okay, why don't you have securities and commodities in, in one department? In one, yeah. yeah. Well, the, the real answer is we, we tried to make this up during the Great Depression and we didn't have enough time to act quickly and get it all done once. So we created two organizations, but it makes no sense. You, should, you really, mm. really should just have one financial regulator. Yeah. And you know, UAE is pretty good in that they have that, yeah. but it's, a, it's tricky here because you got the DIFC and the ADGM, which are both financial free zones. Mm. That's something I like about Dubai is they actually pick the things that have worked in other countries and they're implying it and they're applying it here. Yes. Okay. So wise comment. Thank you. Um, so well, I'll give you another comment. You, yeah. you know how you said this is almost like Los Angeles or whatever. Yeah. It, it, it's not. Dubai picks the best of New York and London and Los Angeles and mm. Miami and, and it, it brings what it's good here. Yeah. I mean, when you were in the marina, you think you're in Miami. Yeah. Okay. When you're somewhere else, do you think you're in Los Angeles? When yeah. you're somewhere else, do you think, you know, Shanghai? Yeah, Shanghai. Yeah, very true. The IFC. Yeah. It's like Shanghai. Okay. So, you know, you're in the you're in the legal department of crypto, but in the in the building and man, and, and kind of putting it together, because it's it's a road that's constantly being paved and pioneered. Mm -hmm. You're at the you're at the ground floor where you're where you're kind of also helping put it all together or you're kind of seeing how it's been put together mm -hmm. now which is a great opportunity by the way to be at the ground floor of that in, in the future in 30 years time when it's a you know established uh, working moving engine you, you would have been there at the beginning i can sit back and be like i was there <laughs> I, I saw the first blockchain come well, out of the mud <laughs> now you youngins take it for granted but i saw ethereum <laughs> Get off my porch. Get off my porch, yeah. <laughs> yeah, rascals. <laughs> and, uh, and, That's and Grandpa. Then, he, keeps, and, he keeps on talking about this Bitcoin yeah, thing. Yeah, you guys yeah. remember that? <laughs> yeah, Grandpa's racist. It's a little bit crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> You're that racist Grandpa. Yeah. Um, so, okay, so uh, I guess you're, you're in that sector of the legal sector mm. of crypto. Mm. Not in the criminal? Oh, sure. I mean, the... Do, do, it depends do, 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 do what you mean. Do, do, do. Uh, no, I mean, I'm, I'm keeping my clients from committing crimes, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes I get called because someone gets cheated out of crypto. That happens all... By the way, if you're in Dubai, be really, really careful about over-the-counter transactions and, you know, that kind of stuff. There's so many scams because it's regulated here. And if you're dealing with gray market stuff, it's it's tricky. D sure. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm helping people who inadvertently got on the wrong side of the law or people who've been the victims of those people, but that's, that's not my bread and butter. My, my bread and butter is working with projects to make them successful, to get, to get everyone treated. Look, I do three things, okay? I, I solve problems, I create opportunities, and I make everyone happy in the process, mm -hmm. okay? Solve problems, create opportunities, make everyone happy in the process, and, and I mean it, mm. all right? And so the, if I'm working on a project, I'm not here to screw anyone over or cause hard feelings or, 
get it to anyone. It's like everyone should feel good. Now, that doesn't mean everyone gets what they want. Some people are unrealistic or too aggressive or they don't understand reality, but everyone needs to be treated with fairness. Mm -hmm. If you treat people with fairness, you, you tend not to end up in front of the police. Mm -hmm. You tend not to end up in front of a judge. Mm -hmm. You know, and then if, if you do, usually they see, okay, wait a second, he was reasonable, he was nice, he documented everything, fine. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, if you're asking me, if Sam Bankman freed from FTX called me up and asked for help, you know, I'd, I'd probably refer him to someone, to be honest. Sure. Are you happy you got 25 years? Am I happy? No, I'm not happy. Do you, do you um, feel like you deserved it? Uh, he was galactically stupid and reckless and casual. 25 years is a lot of time. And he's relatively young. And I, I also look at what other people get for less and other people who cause physical harm to, other, to their victims often get less. And in federal court in the U.S., you don't get parole. So I... No way. So he has to do the 25, no parole. He has to unless he gets clemency or, or the government does something. And it's... I think, I think there's a political... I mean, barring someone killing someone, I'm not happy... Or causing, you know, sexual assault. I'm not happy when any one gets 25 years. You know, if they're doing something non-physical. The... I can't be happy about it. He, just, he definitely deserves something. He, he damaged a lot of people, and he and he put back the industry for a while. But you know that, that's a good chunk of time, and he's a relatively young guy. Yeah. So he's thirty or something, or twenty-seven or something. Listen, the reason I say that is because people in the crypto community look at that going, "Good, he deserves it." They're angry, right? But you're obviously in the scene. You're in the know. You know exactly how it works, and and you you kind of sympathize, going, "Well, it's a bit of an unregulated industry." He thought he was doing the right thing, but he wasn't. But how would he have known? That's why I want to know, like, from your perspective. That's a little generous. Look, he he's operating in the United States. He's making use of the U.S. market. He has certain regulatory requirements, and they were not serious. I mean, the, the, whoever that woman is with her Harry Potter glasses and him, you know. He, they were they they operated like a few jokers. They they yeah. kept they commingled client accounts. They kept their you know they were on Excel. The they did not behave like adults. No. And they got lots of lobbyists. They had lots of privilege, if you want to call it that, and their political connections. They made lots of donations to political parties, and those political parties, you know, initially provided cover to them, including a very silly New York Times article talking about how his bad actions were interfering with his charitable intent. It's like come on. You know, he, he, he's not some, he's innocent to the point of, he's, he was reckless. He deserves punishment. And he deserves to be made an example of, just like the terror, you know, the Luna guy, whatever that was. The Do Do For these guys, I'm, I'm, I'm not ultimately forgiving. But, you know, 25 years is a serious chunk of time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you put, if he put, went away for 10 years and it was a real 10 years and it was that, Fine. I mean, 10 years, it's, you know, he's going to miss out on his 30s. He'll miss out on having kids at a young age. So that's a lot. So, so you sympathize with that sentence a little bit? You think it's a bit heavy? Because here's the thing. Wasn't he like... I'm not, I'm not this or that. I, yeah. it's like, I'm, 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 I think I'm taking a nuanced view of it that he, what he did was really bad. He should be punished. It was ultimately bad for the industry. He deserves to be nailed, I think, but I think 25... What would you have given him if you were the judge? Well, I think I just said 10 years, at least 15 years at the most. Okay. Okay. So that's I think 10 years. 10 years. 10 years in prison is not... You that's know, not a long time, 10 years. He can come out and do it again. Well, okay. If he doesn't learn his lesson after 10 years and does it again, then then yeah. then, then goodbye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to be put in a torture cube for the next thousand years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's some <laughs> science fiction... Whatever. You know, you can be in your Matrix hellscape. As far as so, I get. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You read a lot of sci-fi. Of course. Well, uh, you know, how, how, can you, how can you be in this industry and, and not... Look, my favorite movie is Blade Runner. Everyone knows that. Yeah. Okay, the first Blade good Runner, movie, but the second yeah, one's good. Yeah. But, you know, and then I, I knew Sean Young, and yeah. it was a... Yeah, it was a whole different story. So, yeah. no, of course, I, I, grew, I grew up on science fiction. I was an okay. anti-social kid. Yeah, yeah. Isaac Asimov, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. If you like this video, consider subscribing. We do weekly podcasts with experts in every industry to help you find direction and guide you on your way. Now, let's get back into it. What is it that you're working on right now? What's, what's something you're working on right now? 
that you're excited about? So I am excited about, and you're way ahead of me, and I'm, you're, you're one of my role models, is I am building my community and my voice and the voices of others who think in a, an aligned manner. And the way I'm doing that is through meeting as many people as possible in a productive manner, bringing them into the community like the IFTAR thing, and also blowing up my social media and YouTube channel. It's very small, it's very step-by-step. -step. I need to get help with it. And Thomas is actually helping him. You know, this is great exposure and I appreciate it. Of course. But the, my goal is to have impact. And there's different kinds of impact. There's the one-on-one -on -one meeting with the shake or regulator kind of impact, which is great. And I got that going right now. But there's also the impact, uh, you know, like I said, so, so social media is great because you can do a one-to-many one direct communication that is generally not censored mm -hmm. or not, not being restrained. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there's soft censorship, there's self-censorship, there's, you know, working with algorithm and all this other stuff. But I'm of the opinion that if you put in enough hard, smart work, you can build your audience. Mm -hmm. And I am at this point, since I have my stable living situation and happy marriage and everything else, is I want to focus on building my voice because I, now I need to give you a little bit more philosophy and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to date myself slightly. Y yes, I grew all this science fiction growing up and I, I watched Star Trek and I saw Space 1999 and I, you know, I, I, I thought based on reading this stuff in the 70s and 80s, and yes, I am that old. Okay, I, th I thought reading this stuff in the 70s and 80s, but by the time that 2000 came around, 2010, at least we'd have colonies on m the moon. Sure. Okay, that we'd have our flying cars, that we'd be living to 120, that, you know, we'd have our robots, that we'd have, you know, every everything else. I, th I thought the future would arrive much mm -hmm. more quickly. Mm -hmm. And it, as I, time passed, and the 80s came the 90s, and the 90s came the 2000s, 2010s, it has been a source of great frustration for me as I keep chronologically aging, of course, I'm so young and beautiful, but you know, my chronological age <laughs> keeps on going up. Don't take the bait. Okay, <laughs> yet, yet we're not on Mars yet. Okay, and sure, Elon Musk is doing great and I really appreciate him and you know, st stuff's happening, but it's not quite moving fast enough, mm -hmm. all right? And, and I said this in another video, we're running against the clock. We're running against the clock with global climate change and we're running against the clock with um, global aging. We have two big, structural problems that are facing humanity that they're really serious uh, we may run out of environment and we're just at the time we're all getting old mm. okay if you look at the world it's aging extremely quickly mm. right and meanwhile we got you know social and structural problems in the places that were the most advanced which is the west you know were and so we're, we we we're, we gotta we gotta move mm. and part of why i'm building this voice is to do whatever i can to get humanity moving mm -hmm. And that's a little bit why it's pleasant to be in Dubai, because in some ways, this is the future here. I feel the future here in a way I didn't feel it in Los Angeles. Now, it's recently built future. It's a little bit artificial. There's, you know, a uh, transient feeling to it somewhat, maybe because it's a little bit new, but at least they're, but it's not just that. It's not just an illusion. The leadership here is, is really good and they have a vision and they're enforcing it and they're hardcore. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, to answer your question, what I'm working on is building my voice so I can push towards a rational future that works well for humanity. Mm. And you're part of it now. Well said. You're in it. You're Thank in you. it, brother. Thank you're you. You're in it. Now that you know, you can't ever unknow. <laughs> now that you've seen. <laughs> right? Oh, Lord. That's like, you know, I messaged you the other day and I said to you, you always make me laugh and without you even trying. You're not even trying. But there's one, and, and I'm that guy. I'm the guy that makes you're everyone that laugh. I'm that guy that makes everyone laugh in my circle, but you're the one that makes me laugh. Well, so, we can laugh together. I like it. I think we're both crazy. That's and it. I think you're extra crazy. Okay, so it thanks. makes me laugh. But I'm still a level of crazy that makes my friends laugh. That you can relate. Right? You, like, you, you can like bridge <laughs> bridge the craziness. Bridge the craziness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Super. Okay, so do you hold crypto? Yes. Uh, when did you start investing in crypto? Um, oh, boy. 2016? 2016. What are you investing in? What have you invested in? What's, what's your portfolio look like? I don't want to go into total details about that, but let's okay. just say I love my Bitcoin. I love me my Bitcoins. Okay, and uh, how many Bitcoins do you have? Uh-huh, sure. <laughs> See, this is how you know 
he's very uh, you're, you're very uh, rehearsed because I, I know his experience in doing podcasts and interviews because whenever I ask somebody how many bitcoins you have a crypto guy and it's like their first time they're always thinking like oh, do, I, do I say it do I not say it but then the experienced people bro I'm a lawyer the, the Da Vinci's and everything right they're always like yeah that's funny like, you know, smile and wave, smile and wave. Smile and wave. Yeah, actually, my friend uh, Rick Godard, who I'm doing some events with, hey, Rick, you know, he was talking about now maybe you have this experience. Now that I'm doing the events, of course, everyone and it's successful, everyone kind of wants a piece. Yeah. You know, Gordon, what are you charging? Who's the sponsors? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And he said, Gordon, you're very nice, but you need to learn to smile and wave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I was being cagey before, but now, like, you know, smile and wave. Oh, yeah, yeah. I hope you're having, hope you're having a good time. I, I was at the uh, barber's the other day. I was getting, you know, just a little, little fade. Not, not my head, obviously. Um, and I, just, I don't just know. The beard, just the beard. Yeah. What do you think, my pubes? So, and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> We're crazy. Okay. We're crazy. We're gonna get cancelled. You're gonna get me cancelled. Um, <clears throat> and because because I'm eliciting a response from you. Yeah. Well, you're, you're uh, making me feel comfortable, so it's your fault. Okay. Um, <clears throat> damn it. Sorry. So, so there's a guy that came. Let's in. go talk about Middle Eastern politics. That will that will, <laughs> yeah. get him. You know, in our ethnicities. That will that will get him. Yeah, I'll get him. Um, so there's a guy. It's a Persian and a Jew. <laughs> <laughs> Right and round, like nothing's going on. <laughs> I have a joke. There's a person. Hello, there's a person and a Jew in a nice car. Hello. <laughs> yes, everything's fine. Okay. <laughs> Borat? Yes. That's so good. Number two currency, Ethereum, <laughs> buy it now. My sister, number two prostitute in all of Kazakh. I five. I five, okay. Oh boy. <laughs> you, okay. Ha- you have to take it that one extra step. <laughs> oh, I always do. I okay. have to end it. I have to end it. Okay, sure. um, uh, I forgot what I was saying now. Yeah, I was, I was getting my hair cut, my beard trimmed, all that. And then mm, there's a guy that comes in, 65 year old, maybe Egyptian guy, you know, obviously overweight and not very uh, attractive, and hasn't taken care of stuff, mm. with a gorgeous Ukrainian woman. Gorgeous Ukrainian woman, right? Yep. And then my brother says to me in my ear, strikes close to home. Uh, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Was it you? I'm not a gentleman. Um, Otherwise, yeah. <laughs> and uh, he came into my ear and he goes, that's what 100 Bitcoins buys you. And I'm thinking, why would you go around telling people you have 100 Bitcoins? Right? Because he doesn't. He has more or less. Okay. Yeah, sure. He's not, being, he's not telling you the truth. But you wouldn't go around telling people. I mean, I guess it's Dubai and it's safe, but you shouldn't. You shouldn't go around doing that. So yeah, very very, uh, very smart move on your behalf. No, well, I mean, just to expand on that. So I, I actually have not bought, bought much crypto. I've earned crypto, which is how I like to do it. Hmm? The, look, I'm, I'm, I'm not... You're, you're, oh, because you get paid in crypto for your legal fees. Oh. Yeah. I, I, I like to create. Okay, and you know, I, I had a choice when I came here in 2021 at the tail end of the last marriage. It's like, you know, do I go somewhere where I can save or do I go somewhere where I can create? And mm-hmm. I, you know, Puerto Rico in the US where you can kind of save or Dubai where I can create. And I, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to sit back. I, I just explained, like, I, I'm, I am on a mission. I really am yeah. on a mission. It's not yeah. a joke, it's not marketing. Yeah. And I, you know, I need to be in a place where it is an airport lounge. It is people coming and going where I can meet, where I can connect, where serendipity can happen. And you know, I, you and I can connect on Instagram or wherever. You can come to enough tar, we can hit it off, and I can be in your car. And th- everything leads to something else. Everything else Correct. is fractal. Correct. You know, I, I love I love the fission, nuclear fission nature of relationships. Mm. Right. You know, because now you're with Sonia from you know Coin W, and yep. you know, you're talking about your uh, yep. attorney friend I should meet, and you know, you met Thomas and everything else. Yep. Yep. Fascinating. You, know, you, you have to be in the mix, and if, yep. if you go to some place where you're comfortable but isolated that's great if you're into retirement mm-hmm. but you need to be in dubai if you're serious mm-hmm. darn it i can come and go on <laughs> by the way for you to build your uh personal portfolio or personal image mm-hmm. uh on yeah, social media and everything yeah. that that's that's what you're kind of working on you said to me now that, that that's easy for you with your character i think um that's, that's very easy for you a lot of people can't pull it off. They're a little bit awkward, this and that. But for you, you, you you're almost made for it. I am almost made for it. But the the trick, is, thank you. The the trick is that my personality and nature lends itself to Lex Freeman length, long style discussions. Yeah, but that's your style. Sure, it's my style. But if, if it, the the challenge is with a YouTube channel for people to engage in a long conversation, they usually have to know the people and want to hear what they have to say. For someone who's new, it's hard to get them to invest in 
an hour long conversation, especially when the first 10 minutes is getting to, to know the person. So I'm having, I'm getting some help and maybe you'll help also. If you don't mind. Sure. You know, um, or just I'm getting some mentorship. I, I, I need to be able to lead off with shorter snippets that gather attention and build brand and then, and then f- funnel them to the longer form. Because, you know, if, if you and I were mm-hmm. talking, we'd be in a, you know, something like this. I think it's crawling up an hour if it hasn't been one an hour. An hour and nine minutes. Oh, geez. Okay, that's a lot of commitment. <laughs> I appreciate your patience. <laughs> you're not charging me by the hour, are you? I think you're charging me. Oh, okay, okay. No, no, okay. Yeah, I think, I think we yeah. got to pay our driver. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's, he's doing a great job. <laughs> yeah. So, like, I mean, like, you have a, you have a large social media following. They'll, they'll and it's a dynamic conversation. So if they get into it, they'll probably stick in it. Yeah. For, for, for me, it's just, I don't have the following yet. So I, I sort of have to work on my, my, the end of my funnel is filling up. I got over a hundred videos and stuff's coming, but I need to get the, the pipe into that mm-hmm. a little wider, more accessible. Mm-hmm. And I appreciate the compliment. I mean, hopefully it, it will happen. You have the character for it is what I'm trying to say. And Thank off you. air, I'll tell you some strategies that's worked for me. That's taken me here very quickly. And, and, uh, you've been a great success fast. You're my man. Thank you. Appreciate you. Well, yeah. Thank you. Um, good things happen to good people. Ah, oh, thank you. You're, you're a gentleman. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll share some stuff with you that's that's worked for me, um, and then uh, yeah, implement that. It's it's, okay. uh, it's it's not it's not hard. It's all trial and error. But I mean, if you can fast process it a little bit and learn, from I'd rather learn mistakes. from other people's trials exactly. and errors. Exactly. And it then, is all trial and error. Correct. So tell me yours. <laughs> yeah, and it always changes. The yes. algorithm always changes. So when a lot of people, that's why I can't say it publicly because if, because if a lot of people do it, then it changes. Yes. Then everyone's doing it. Then you've got to change again. So. Um, so you always got to kind of be on the ball. Um, okay, so um, what was I going to ask you now? I forgot. Uh, it was to do with crypto. Um, what, what are your plans? With what? Let's flip the script. By the way, uh, with, I, I've got a lawyer in Australia. We yeah. won a case and we thought, oh, awesome, let's go out for lunch uh, you know, mm-hmm. to celebrate. I get back to the office, he sends me an invoice for an hour of his time. I took him out to lunch. I'm, so, I'm scared to wave at my lawyer if he's gonna, if I see him on the streets, if he's gonna send me an invoice. <laughs> Probably shouldn't have done that. <laughs> Probably shouldn't have done that. I was like, hey, listen, let's celebrate. I don't want to take you to a restaurant. I got an invoice for it. I was like, God damn. What's my plans with? That may have been, it may have been a mistake. May. Did you ask? Didn't ask, just paid it. We, we, we listen, we just won. We're, we're, we're happy, we're celebrating. It wouldn't have been a mistake. Why? It can't because because mistake. someone can put down their time of where they were and their secretary or staff could be entering their time for them. Oh, I see. It, it may have been a mistake. I see. That's okay. I say, so, if, lawyer, if you're watching this, maybe you want to make that a mistake. Greg? Greg? <laughs> Greg? Greg? Greg, are you. <laughs> Go back. No, let's be serious, Greg. Greg, are you drinking Costa Coffee? <laughs> You know, Greg, you know we're you know we're in the Middle East. I hope we're not drinking Starbucks because you know there's like there's like there's like there's like beef. There's like, <laughs> there's like beef right now, Greg. Yeah. You want to get canceled, Greg? I know. <laughs> and apparently owned and operated, but hey, never mind. Costa Coffee, Coast it, coffee. it tastes better. <laughs> okay. Anyways, go on. <laughs> oh Lord, I, I could make a lot of jokes right now. Oh, okay. uh, but I'm biting. I'm biting my tongue so okay, hard okay, right yeah. now. Um, <clears throat> okay, so what, what, what cryptos are you excited about? Or no, you don't even look at cryptos. You're no, no, I know. Okay. Uh, of course I look. I'm just not trading guy. I, okay. you know, I, I, I know what I'm good at. I think trading's great. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I just had uh, Crypto AM Alex on the show. And he, he, you know, he's someone that's been great to me also. He's here now. Sorry, he was here. Now he's in Kiev going back to Phuket. But... I admire traders. I am probably I look. I admire trading. It's just I'm not the guy who's going to sit there and figure out technical analysis. I'm not going to work for four years to hone my strategy. I'm not going to do all that. It's just that's just not me. I am the technology, the philosophy, the politics, the, the regulation, everything else. So I, I'm not the guy. Everyone always asks me like, you know, what, what coin do you like? I like I like I like the coin you understand. Mm-hmm. So go, you know, DYOR, do your own research, mm-hmm. or hire someone who's really good. You know, if you want a project set up correctly, mm-hmm. if you want the regulator spoken to, if you want to have the right intellectual property protections, I'm your guy. Yeah. You know? Got oh, yeah. So, so, sorry, no tips. No, no, no. Okay. So, so, so no tips. So, you, you just... Well, here's a tip. Buy Bitcoin. Okay. Okay? That's That's, a, that's your... Well, it's reality. I mean, by... by look, I, I don't think you're going to go wrong long term with Bitcoin or Ethereum. Mm-hmm. I, I, and... It's, it's half financial advice, half wealth preservation advice, because I 
we're the world this is a whole nother video but the world is going is has already started down a road of cataclysmic change and there's gonna be winners and losers but this time around there's gonna be a lot of losers because the money that they hold their wealth in is the marker that they use to have claims upon wealth mm -hmm. the markers are being destroyed <clears throat> Mm -hmm. All right, so you need to be in assets one way or another, but assets generally aren't liquid. Well, mm -hmm. the good thing about crypto is it's a liquid asset. Mm -hmm. It's both the asset and the money, mm -hmm. all right, in a way that a house isn't. You can buy a house that's worth a lot of money, but you can't quickly turn it into cash. Mm -hmm. All right, you know, the Bitcoin is like having a valuable appreciating asset that is also cash. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think you need to keep some in USDT or, you know, USDC, but maybe USDT is better because it's more international. And I think you're smart to have Bitcoin and Ethereum just because, you know, at some point, cash and money may break down. You may not be able to pull your money out of the bank account. Mm -hmm. All right. So even if Bitcoin crashed 50 percent, the fact that you can even send it to someone else without someone else's permission is it has a survival value. Mm -hmm. Right. It's not just the money that's worth. Mm -hmm. So, how's that? Very true. And look, I mean, uh, as, as Big Ron said, cash rules everything around me. Um, so... <laughs> I promise I won't ever do that again. <laughs> I lied. <laughs> okay, so you're a crypto lawyer. What do you think about what happened with CZ and Binance? Oh, like his huge fine and the AML stuff? Yeah. Are we, well, should I answer now? Yeah. The, um, I think that if you're operating at the size that Binance is operating, you have to respect, play along with, and comply with the anti mundering laws and know your customer and know your transactions and know your business. You have to play along with these rules. Okay, you can't get to that size without doing it. Okay, now that being said, the anti money laundering system we have is truly archaic and punishes and slows down the law abiders and only partially and ineffectively slows down the criminals. It's kind of like gun laws in the US. Okay, if they're a law-abiding citizen, they wanted the gun and they're the criminal, they're not gonna, by definition, they're not gonna follow the law. So this stuff is good for punishing people after the fact, but it's not really, it's causing a lot of harm. Okay, this, it's making it hard to transfer your money from jurisdiction to jurisdiction and it's your money, you earned it, it's yours. <clears throat> the idea you have to go in a bank and they're asking why you're withdrawing money, what you're going to spend it for, which I think is happening in Australia. It's ridiculous. Exactly. Okay. It's your money. Mm -hmm. You know, well, I mean, part of my, I'll swear, screw you. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, why, what, what, it's a privacy violation. And I think, you know, in, in Europe at least, they have this idea of, you know, if you want to be in German, your private sphere or sphere. You know, you have your private sphere. You know, part of being an autonomous person, part of, you know, this whole thing that, it, you know, if you have nothing to hide, you'll tell everyone all your business. That is a mind game that people with power play on people without power. Because believe me, the people with power don't tell you where they have all their money. Don't tell you about all their mistresses. Don't tell you about what they did. Okay. That's just a, a mind game. Mm -hmm. right, you, part of being an empowered citizen is having a house that's your own, your house is your castle, and having a private life that's your castle. And so, and a big part of having a private life is having private finances. And so the, the government's clearly overreaching on this. They're doing it, and it, you know, they use 9-11 and the Patriot Act to fight against terrorism. And they always say it's terrorism and they always say it's drugs and they always say it's human trafficking. And, and those are valid concerns, but what they've done, like they always do, is they've taken those valid concerns, expanded them, used them as pretexts to now go after uh, like a surveillance state Slash, slash tax collection. So I am, I am on one hand as a lawyer counseling my clients to comply with these rules, but I do not see them for something other than they are, which is a governmental power grab. And we're, we're heading into a time between AI and surveillance and drones and you know central bank digital currencies where the government can see everything and control everything. And that's not good for democracy. That's not good for a non-democratic state that wants to preserve a private sphere like Dubai does. You have, you may be being watched, but you're reasonably free here. Okay, I'm free in ways I'm not in Los Angeles. I, you know, I'm, I'm not gonna get mugged. All right, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going, you know, if I lose my wallet in a car or a taxi, it will get returned. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there's different kinds of freedom. Mm -hmm. And so the, the, just in general, I think, we, we need to rework these laws and we need, we need to rework these norms, but I am not sure it's gonna happen. So I, I, I have mixed feelings. And you know, CZ is great, 
He's doing the best he can. And, you know, you pointed out the law is either A, not existent, B, changing, or C, I'll add, used punitively. You know, in the U.S., it's punitive. They don't tell you what the rules are, but then they punish you when you break them. Mm. You know, that's not justice. No. And, and, and I think it's a violation of the Bill of Rights because, you know, you're supposed to have due process. We can't have due process if you don't know what the rules are. Mm. So, and the rules aren't, aren't knowable, mm -hmm. what are you going to do? So, mixed feelings. Do you, do you think he got what he deserved or no? I mean, he just paid money, right? Yeah, a lot of money. Well, he made a lot of money. Yeah. So, I don't know. I, I don't, I, you know, it's, it's different. There's different levels of culpability and there's different levels of, he made a lot of money. I think, I think the U.S. just wanted its peace. You know, it, it's, it's funny because the, the U.S. is now going to sell all the Bitcoin that it took from Silk Road. Well, yes. You know, R Ross Ulbrich. So, Ross Ulbrich is rotting in jail for the rest of his life. And meanwhile, the U.S. kind of bought Bitcoin cheap yeah. through, through him. Yeah. Well, didn't, didn't they sell it the other day for like 45000 something like that? And it was like... Yes. And, and, and now, they're, the now they're doing... Well, they're, they did some, I believe. And now they're putting the next bunch on Coinbase, which is Go funny because they're fighting with Brian Armstrong. You yeah. know, it's, it's like the U.S. can't make up its mind. And, you know, and, and to be fair, the U.S. has a whole bunch of government departments. You have the federal level, you have each individual state, and then yeah. you have the um, the federal district, uh, Southern New York, yeah. SDNY, that you know has its own activist uh, prosecutors. So yeah. it's it's part of the part of the genius of the United States was this decentralized nature, and so I, I don't knock that. There's something there's something to be said for the federalist system in the U.S. and the separation of powers, but that is a little bit of an artifact from the 18th century mm -hmm. that doesn't make for a nimble or understandable set, uh, situation mm -hmm. in 2024. Because imagine you go to the U.S. and you have to qualify with the federal government in California and mm -hmm. Florida and Nevada and this branch and that branch. It's it's like, ah, oh, God. Yeah. Jesus, look at that. How gorgeous is that building? Everyone coming to Dubai, come to the Museum of the Future. You can't see it, but it's there. It's and, <laughs> and it's great. You can't see it, but it's there. And it's gorgeous. What a building, yes. too. Have you been inside? Of course. I haven't been inside. It's beautiful. Worth going? There. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I'm bringing my mom next week. Okay. Where's, where's your mom live? Uh, Los Angeles. Los Angeles. And she's visiting for the first time. It'll be nice. First time? Yeah. How yeah. long have you been in Dubai for now? Uh, three years. Wow. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I've seen her, but, you know, she lives yeah. in Los Angeles and she, and, but she hasn't seen me and Arena since we got married. So n now that I'm married, she's yeah. coming out. Where did you get married? Uh, Abu Dhabi. Nice. Yeah, and it was great. Beautiful. Yeah. Uh, you have a beautiful wife, by the way. Thank you. Um, very, like, uh, very, uh, very kind-hearted. Very, very. Oh, you know, my ex was Russian, right? And I went to Russia. But I know your wife's Ukrainian. Um, before you correct me. Um, and uh, did you see these looks, man? Yeah, but listen, I can read your brain. Okay. Um, and uh, <laughs> just like you can read mine, when you said something before, and you go, "Don't take the bait." <laughs> Brother, yeah. and also like your wife's very, not Russian, very, very, very. She's got a very warm heart. Yeah, she's always smiling. Like you could look Russian. She's a sweetheart. Yeah. yeah, you could look Russian, and go to Russia, and don't know you're not Russian because you're smiling. Okay, so uh, l l let me let me give you two cents on that, and I guess you can make this real. Uh, there's people, different cultures act different ways. Mm -hmm. All right, like you know, if Japanese want to be too, you know, want to be in an empty room and don't necessarily like physical closeness. Brazilians like physical closeness, okay? Americans have a reputation for being superficially, especially in Los Angeles, being superficially friendly and never following through and, you know, sure. then talking trash behind your back, who knows? You know, and Germans have a reputation for being cold and strict and everything else. And Israelis, you know, have a reputation for being sabras, which is rough on the outside and soft on the inside. And mm. to use your example, Russians specifically have you know, if you, the idea is if you smile, you're an idiot. You're like, you're smiling or you're insulting the other person. Okay, mm. so it, it, once you tune into their vibe, you, A, you don't get offended, and B, you, you appreciate their seriousness, mm. right? And once you understand that, sorry, just to go a bit down on this, once you understand that Russian women won't approach you, you know, and won't smile at you and will give you a hard time, you just, hard time, you just understand that's a shit test, mm -hmm. Okay, and the fact that they're not walking away means that you can continue the conversation. Exactly. Right? And it, it's actually good because it means that they're not open to everyone, that if you actually get them, you usually got them. And when yeah. they, and Russian women are, are, Slavic women are, once you get past the initial part, they're great and they're very yeah. warm and they're very supportive. You just need to do your job as a man yeah. and be a man. You know, and if you're some, you know, limp, 
American guy, mm. you can get eaten alive. You just need to get in the right mindset. What, what made you move to Dubai? What made me move to Dubai mm. is I was in Los Angeles during COVID and Black Lives Matter and it was a complete wreck. Mm. And I had sent my wife and my t- at the time and my son at the time, my stepson at the time, th- first to Thailand to be safe from COVID and then to Switzerland. Okay, and that ended up being a huge relationship to Troy mis- mistake that eventually worked out for the best because now I'm with Arena. At the time, it was really a bad situation. And a friend of mine, actually a Russian night lady, speaking of which, who was here, not even such a close friend, but just you know, a nice lady, reached out to me and said, she said, Gordon, I don't think you're having a good time in Los Angeles. I think you should visit Dubai. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't posting anything that would let people know this. It was just my own little private Los Angeles hell. I'm like, okay, that's interesting. So I flew out to Dubai. And, the, you know, there was not much traffic. I didn't realize that was COVID. You know, the <laughs> gyms were open. The ladies were friendly. Crypto was happening. You know, and I'm like, what am I doing? Mm-hmm. So I came back to Los Angeles and the prior relationship took its natural course, meaning it crashed and burned. Um, and I closed up business in Los Angeles and came out to Dubai. And then for a good solid year, I was living in Airbnbs or hotels or actually I got some nice clients who put us up in a penthouse because I do because I do good work wow um, and friends. well you know I, I listen you gotta, you gotta give value to, you gotta mm. give action to get action correct alright that, that's kind of the idea behind the iftar also correct um, provide value provide value provide value first mm-hmm. okay yeah. you know, don't be shy provide value first you don't have to go crazy with it but mm. always always lead with the value yes and and it just one thing led to another. You know, I think one thing you can talk about is, you know, you and I both came here, started with little, and then mm-hmm. without being douchebags about it, actively expanded our network mm-hmm. and curated it and then came up with our own tools for doing it. You know, you, yeah. this is very clever. Thank this you. is very, you know, innovative. Thank you. You know, um, and things just grew. Yeah, of course. And, you know, just people like you and I, egoless, just genuine, what you see is what you get. That, that resonates a lot here. Right, especially you know, we've got two crowds in the crypto community. Mm. We've got the ones that are really in it for the technology, and we've got the people that just want to flex and dye their hair purple and order bottles and pour it on their watch. Right? I mean, it sounds nice. <laughs> Once, twice. <laughs> Once, twice. Like I, I got to bed. Like I said, I wake up early and study German. I, I can't yeah. stay up late and do yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I know, I know. And, and that's part of the community I probably don't like. Right? The the, yeah. the DGen meme coin only. You know what I mean? That that supply that I, I probably don't. I'm not too fond of. But the the other side I really like. When I go to the conferences, there's actually people talking about the technologies and progressing the uh, the the uh, you know the the Can I make a expansion. Suggestion? Yeah. You know, Dubai's got a lot of levels, and there's this famous saying, like, the man is the room he's in. If you get those D-Gen purple hair guys at the club, they're going to act one way. Yo, hey, hey, girl, you know, with their five little models. Sure. Okay, if you can manage to get them alone for breakfast, you know, not after night after they went out, you'll usually be able to get to another side. Got ya. Okay, and you just need to filter how you interact with them. The, the idea, just to kind of punch it a little, the idea that Iftar is... I'm creating the room so that when they walk into the room, a certain side of the personality comes out. Mm. Okay, it's 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 meant to be that way. And by the way, the guy who had an issue with Anastasia, whoever he is, you know, it's, he was trying. To, he, 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 the problem he had is he, he was not acting in a way that was congruent with the room. Yeah, if he was, he would have gotten a good response because yeah. you know everyone there is cool. Well said. You know, well, very well. No, I try. Very well. So I, but, I, I, I just, I just try to be to, open. Those people I'm referring to that I see in the conferences, I didn't see at your event. No. No. I didn't see those guys. Well, well the, the, they would have to... Just because I had breakfast with them, that doesn't mean they're coming here. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. Gordon? There's levels, man. There's layers. Of course. I appreciate you. My brother. Thank you for coming This on. is amazing. Thank you for coming on. I Shaq, really appreciate Shaq, you. Shaq, Shaq, our driver. Shaq, Shaq, Shaq. Amazing. <laughs> Thanks for um, This has been Gordon. I hope you enjoyed this discussion. Uh, this was amazing. Well done. And we're out.